Hello again, this is Rick Frost, K4REF. Welcome back for another one of our WinLink update videos that will cover features of RMS Express, which has recently been renamed to WinLink Express, that you might not be aware of. In this program, we'll be looking at how to use a software-based TNC sound modem with a Signalink sound card interface to do VHF packet sessions in WinLink Express. So let's get started. People often ask me, what do I need to get to start using digital communications in ham radio, and more specifically with WinLink? The first piece of hardware I usually recommend to folks is the Signalink USB sound card interface. It's extremely popular. It's used with FL Digi, Ham Radio, and other sound-based softwares. We use it with Winmore and RMS Express for HF communications for, and basically long distance. If we want to do VHF packet for local communications in WinLink, we typically have been using hardware-based TNC modems. Two examples here are the Cantronics P KPC-3 Plus and the internal modem on a TS-2000. You've seen these in my videos. What I want to introduce to you today is a new software that you can use with the signal link to do VHF packet sessions. This software is called Sound Modem by UZ7HO. I just discovered it. It's a pretty slick software. I'm going to take you to his website, show you how to acquire the software, how to install the software, how to configure the software both uh, on the sound modem interface and also in WinLink, and then we'll so show you a session. The first thing we're going to do is go get the installation instructions and the software to put on your system. Where we're going to go first is w2ygsoftware.com, or you can just do a search for w2yg, and uh, you should come up with that. Uh, when you come to the home page, it'll look like this. I want you to click over to the download page, and on the download page, the first thing on there is the UZ7HO sound modem installation instructions link. Just click on that link and save that file onto your computer. This is a PDF instructions on how to configure the sound modem. And what that's going to look like is this PDF that I'm bringing up. And basically, this is going to be the step-by-step -step, uh, process that we're going to take, and I'm going to show you on how to configure and set up your sound modem. So I'm just going to pull through some of these page. In case you can't get to this, uh, you'll have it on this video. So you're basically just going to click on all these things, and I'm going to show you this in just a little bit. And there's the final land. This was done by Dick uh, W6CCD. The other page I want you to go to uh, is the W, uh, sorry, the Uniform Zebra 7 Hotel Oscar page. If you just do a, a, a Google search for that, it should come up. Uh, this is uh, Andrea's home page. And if you click on it, you can read a little about Andre. Uh, he is actually located in the Ukraine. On this page, go over to Packet Radio, and that's the page where we're going to get the software. This gives you the description uh, and what this is all about. Uh, this software actually uses the AGW Packet Engine uh, with a TCP slash IP interface, lets it talk directly into your computer. It's been tested on XP, Vista 7, 8, and 10, and it appears to be stable. And you can see all the different sound modems and high-speed modems that it emulates. Uh, the actual interface looks like this, as this is in black and white mode. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see the files that we want to require. The two files that we want to get is the sound modem zip file. It'll have a number after it. That's the version. In this case, it's sound modem uh, .94 version. So you're going to click on that and download that to your computer. And I also want you to click on the user's guide. This is in English. And uh, click on that and download that to your computer. Computer. So those are the two files that you need to put on your computer. 
So here are the three files you should have in your computer now. You should have a folder, sound modem 94, or a sound modem with a number after it, the user guide, and the installation instructions. Now the file that you download uh, from the site will be a zipped file. I've already unzipped it here, uh, so we just have a folder. Within that folder is the actual program that you're going to run. And there's no installation for it, it's just an executable program. So it can go anywhere on your computer. Where I put it on mine is on my C drive, I have a folder called Ham Software. I created that folder myself. Within that folder, I created a sound card modem folder. And that's the folder that I have all of these files in. You, again, you can put it anywhere you want on your computer. Uh, just after you finish doing that, uh, what you want to do is create a shortcut to the desktop so you can start this program. So just right click on it and create a shortcut and put that on your desktop so you can start the program. And that's all there is to installing it. The three-step process for using this sound software is to install your Signalink and have it operational, then to open and start the sound modem and have it operational, and then open RMS Express and have it operational. So I'm going to assume that you have a signal link connected to your system and it's fully configured. Uh, if you're already using it for Winmore, you're all set, or any of the other ones like FL Digi. Uh, so now we're going to configure the sound modem software. So let's come up and click on settings. Uh, you'll notice there's an output volume and input volume. Neither one of these work with the signal link because they're on the front of the signal link. Uh, so if you click on either one of these, nothing will happen. What we're going to go to is go to, to devices. So hit setting and devices and open up that menu. On this menu, uh, we're just going to basically choose uh, the signal link, and the signal link for the input and output, you can see they're both here. They're usually always listed as USB audio codec. And what I'm doing is working down the installation list. So if you've not already opened that, uh, you can open your installation uh, PDF that we downloaded earlier. And I'm just doing exactly what's on that list. Uh, we're going to skip dual channel, but basically the list requires you check all the rest of these items. Uh, TX rotation, signal channel output, color waterfall, and stop. A waterfall and minimize. Um, I actually prefer the black and white waterfall, so I'm going to uncheck the color waterfall. That's just my personal preference. Uh, on the right are the sampling rates. Uh, if you use checksum, which is a program or utility uh, that can help make the signal link a, more, a little bit more accurate, uh, you can use that and then fill in uh, the parts per million uh, changes in both of these places for transmit and receive. Uh, if you want to do that later, that this is where you'd plug those numbers in. But just leave all these numbers as they are uh, to get started. Uh, then we come down to server setup. You want to uncheck the AGWPE and you want to enable and check the KISS server port. So the KISS server port, uh, port number 8100, and then we want that enabled. That's how it's going to talk uh, to uh, the WinLink software. And then the last section, uh, PTT port, we want none and we want both of these things unchecked. And so that's all we need to do. We're going to click OK on this, and it's going to tell us that we're going to need to restart the program uh, for these things to take effect, and that would be fine. We'll do that shortly. Uh, the other thing that we want to look at, uh, come up to Settings, and come down to Modems, and we want to set this menu up. Uh, there's actually uh, two modems within here. There's a channel A and a channel B. We're only interested in channel A. Uh, so we're just going to come down and leave default settings checked, leave all these with the defaults, uh, leave all of this as it is. Uh, we do want to click on the KISS optimization, so both that and the non-AX25 filter are on. Uh, the next box down here, the modem type, this does have to be changed. You need to change it from the HF to the VHF. So you're going to click on the VHF uh, AX25 1200 baud. That's the packet uh, modem that we want to use. Uh, and you can leave all the rest of these uh, configured as they are. So just click OK. Uh, so at that this point, uh, your software on the sound modem is configured and ready to use.
The last step in the process is to configure RMS Express to work with the sound modem. Uh, so we've opened RMS Express and we're going to go to the session uh, Packet WinLink. Uh, so we're going to choose Packet WinLink and open that session. Uh, when we do that, uh, it's going to come up and try to initiate for my Cantronics unit, and it's failed. Uh, at this point, come up to click on Setup, and well, this is how we're going to set up uh, to use uh, the sound modem software. Uh, so under TNC Connection, we're going to come down and choose KISS. Uh, so just choose the KISS, and under Model, we're going to choose ACK Mode. Uh, then for Serial Port, we're going to choose TCP, so it can directly connect. And you should see this result when you click on it, 127.0.0.1 and port 8100. Uh, so this is how it should look uh, to talk to the software. Uh, under the parameters, just make sure the 1200 is clicked, uh, and you can leave all these as the default. Uh, at the very bottom, make sure that you check Enable iPoll. That has to be checked. At that point, all you have to do is hit Update. And that will update the software, and it will reinitialize, and you can see that it's ready to go, uh, and it's initiated uh, with the sound modem software. Uh, a couple last uh, items here on the sound modem. Uh, you'll notice that channel A, make sure that this is set to 1700. Uh, when I first got uh, the software, I was clicking around on the waterfall, and it, I set it to something other than 1700. And when I actually tried to use it, uh, it would not work. It would not connect to an RMS station. Uh, and it's like any other sound card software. It has to be on the correct uh, where place in the waterfall to connect. So make sure that that's set to 1700. Uh, uh, and also my experience on setting the squelch is it'll work either way with the squelch all the way open and I tried it uh, by setting the squelch on VHF and it worked fine on that too so I just leave the squelch open uh, and that way you can see it on the waterfall uh, but I think either way will work uh, so that's it. That gives you the setup on how to use it. Uh, I'm going to end here with actually making a connection, and you can see the process go. Uh, so I hope this uh, video is helpful to you. I hope you enjoy this uh, new software. Uh, I think you're really going to like it. It gives people that don't have uh, packet hardware uh, a way to use a signal link, which is a very common uh, sound device uh, to be able to use and do VHF packet. For more in-depth descriptive information on WinLink, please go to the main website at winlink.org. You can get everything there from current WinLink news to all the details of WinLink in the Book of Knowledge. If you want to learn more about how to install, configure, and operate RMS Express, please go to my YouTube channel by searching for K4REF and watch my complete WinLink RMS Express training series that covers all the details of how to get started.
So that's it for this update. Seventy three from K4 REF.